Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, you watched me wet sand the Chevelle, and in today's video, we're gonna try to bring the paint back to a beautiful, lustrous finish. We hope. The products I'm going to use are Meguiar's Gold Class Shampoo, uh, because I need to do a very thorough washing of the car so I don't have any contaminants get on the paint while I'm polishing. I'm then going to use Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut Compound, followed by Meguiar's 205 Ultra Finishing Polish, and then Turtle Wax Hybrid Solution Ceramic Spray Coating to give it a protective layer. Now this is not a paid promotion. I've done my research and as far as I can tell, these are very good products and I believe in them. If you want to purchase them, I'll leave links in the description so you can pick them up yourselves. Doing a walk around of the vehicle, you can see the results of the wet sanding. This looks a lot different in the sunlight than it did in the garage. Now, I'll probably say this a few times, but I was not going for perfection. I mainly wanted to flatten out some of the orange peel and get rid of some of the scratches and swirls. At this time, I wasn't aware there was a serious problem, which I'll address later, so stick around. I first needed to clean the engine bay under the hood. I picked up a set of brushes off of Amazon. I believe these are synthetic bristle instead of boar hair. I'm not sure which is better, but this is what showed up. I then sprayed a liberal amount of Spray 9 to help break down the dirt and grime. I would have preferred foam cleaner, but Spray 9 is what I had laying around. I gave the engine a thorough scrubbing, using a small brush to get into all the crevices that hold all the dirt. After scrubbing it down, I gave the engine bay a rinse using my FitLife garden hose. A review I did of the hose can be found in the description. I covered the air cleaner with a plastic garbage bag as I didn't want any water to get into the engine. I recommend cleaning the underside of the hood first, otherwise all the dirty water will drip all over your clean engine. I then used soapy water to go over the engine bay a second time. Another rinse with the hose and then I dried it off with a microfiber towel and compressed air. I found the valve covers had an unpleasant haze to them, which may have been residue from the Spray 9. Either way, I took a wet sponge and some towels to clean them again for a more acceptable finish. I moved on to washing the car, where I first sprayed Windex over the front bumper and grill to let it soak. The idea being to let the ammonia help break down the bug guts that were stuck on. I'm sure a proper bug cleaner would have been a better choice, but again, this is what I had. I used the two bucket method to wash the car, a bucket of soapy water to wash, and then another bucket to rinse the washing mitt to keep any dirt or contaminants from getting into the clean washing water. After a quick wash of the car to get rid of the majority of clear coat that came off during sanding, I then used the bristle brushes with some high concentrated soapy water to clean things like the emblems, body seams, wheels, and grill. After another full wash, I dried the car with a microfiber towel and compressed air. Once fully dried, I applied some tape to protect the trim during polishing. I borrowed a Simona's dual action 8 inch buffer and bought some new foam bonnets. I 
primed the pad with Meguiar's M105 cutting compound and then applied too much product and worked on too big of area. From here, the results look pretty good, right? The truth is, it wasn't. So I went and bought some microfiber bonnets for a better cut. Primed with 105 again, I continued to work too large of area. I also moved the machine way too fast. However, I did apply significantly more pressure than I did with the foam bonnets. Unfortunately, the results were still unacceptable. So just a quick side-by-side -side comparison. This side was done with Meguiar's M105 and a foam pad. This side was done with M105 and a microfiber pad and more pressure, which seemed to make a big difference. As you can see, this looks a lot better. Unfortunately, if you look at it at the right angles, you can see there's still a lot of scratches and swirl marks in there. And I can't seem to figure out how to get rid of them. I don't know if I got the wrong machine or the wrong technique or the wrong pad material. I'm not sure, but I'm going to have to try to figure a way to get rid of that because so far I do not like it. Well, it looks like I screwed up. During the wet sanding process, I induced deeper scratches than I ever would have imagined. Now, I thought that this finish that you see here would be good enough for when I went to compound the car. As I'm using a relatively aggressive compound, Meguiar's M105, which is supposed to be good enough to take out 1200 grit uh, scratches, and this was done with 2000, I thought I'd be okay. Now, whether it was my technique, or maybe I didn't sand enough, or whatever, these scratches are not good enough, and the compound polish is not taking them out. So, I'm gonna have to resand the entire car again. <laughs> This time with 3,000 grit sandpaper, followed by 5,000 grit sandpaper. And then by the time I compound and polish it out, hopefully it looks good after that and the scratches are gone. But either way, I'm just going to have to live with the finish. I bit the bullet and bought a dual action buffing machine that was on sale. A lot of people suggested I should get a rotary as well since they work faster, but I could only afford just one. Even if the DA was not the ideal machine, it was still a huge improvement over sanding by hand. I probably didn't have the correct RPM or travel speed, but I did start to make a conscious effort to slow down and let the machine do the work. Once I went over the car with 3000 grit Trizac pads, I moved on to the 5000 grit Trizac pads and sanded the car again. On areas I couldn't safely use the machine, I sanded by hand. I also made more of an effort to dunk the sanding paper in water more frequently to keep the pads clean. The goal is to make a more smooth, uniform surface once sanded, and the dual action machine certainly made achieving that goal at least somewhat attainable. After doing another complete washing of the car, there was visibly a huge improvement over the wet sanding that was done by hand using 2000 grit sandpaper. The finish wasn't as good as it looked inside the garage, so I'm hoping it's sufficient enough for the compound to cut to an acceptable finish. Still using Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut Compound, I applied it to a Meguiar's DA power system that I borrowed, fitted with a firm cutting pad. This simply attaches to your cordless drill and it works very well in areas not suitable for the larger 6 inch pads. On the edges, seams, and tighter areas, I chose to compound by hand using a microfiber towel. The results were actually quite good.
On the DA, I used a firm white foam pad that a reputable auto detailing store sold me. I wasn't 100% sure on how much pressure to apply, not to mention RPM and motion speed, so I'm sure my technique could use improvement. Nevertheless, the 105 compound made short work of cutting through the majority of the fine scratches left by wet sanding. I routinely cleaned the pad with compressed air off camera. However, I wasn't fully satisfied with the results, so I put on a microfiber bonnet that was not designed for the foam pad that I had, and I found this to cut much better. In hindsight, I would have started with a microfiber pad and did my second pass with the 105 compound and foam pad if it was needed at all. I then used Meguiar's Ultimate Compound as a finishing polish rather than the 205 shown earlier. I'll explain that at the end of the video, so keep watching. I used a softer foam finishing pad that came with the dual action buffer. I also found the Ultra Compound to have a longer working time than the 105 compound. Again, I cleaned the pad with compressed air frequently off camera. The last step was to apply some turtle wax ceramic spray coat to protect our polished paint. This applies easily, dries without streaks, and leaves a beautiful shine. Well, I finally finished the paint correction. Uh, it took many, many hours, <laughs> far more than I ever expected. Uh, I did for a bit think that I destroyed the paint. Uh, I was a little bit worried. Um, fortunately, this isn't the best paint in the world and I'm not 100% attached to it, but I certainly didn't want to have to re repaint the car. Um, so I was a little bit worried. But after a bunch of work, um, we got it back. Now in some lighting, like artificial lighting or in the evening or in the night, this paint looks amazing, like absolutely fantastic. Maybe not quite glass finish or a mirror finish, but it's pretty darn close. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, the orange peel that was there is pretty much gone. Um, so that's great. But in direct sunlight, of course it's gonna show off any of the flaws, especially with black paint. And of course there are some flaws in this. And honestly, it's not as deep of a finish as I was expecting. Now I don't know if that's because of the products I was using in terms of compounds or polishes, or if it's the pads or just my technique. I'm not 100% sure, but it doesn't seem as black as I would like it, at least when looking at it in direct sunlight. It is what it is. Now let's talk about some of the mistakes that I made. Number one, when I did my test spot, which you would see from the previous video, I was looking at the results under garage lighting. That's not good enough. 
You need to use at least a flashlight. And let me tell you, this can be your best friend because you will see any of the swirls or imperfections that are going on in your paint correction that you will not see under just you know, garage light bulbs. It's just not gonna happen. So this is one of your best friends when doing paint correction. Mistake number two was wet sanding the entire car. In hindsight, I probably didn't need to do that at all, but I did have some orange peel and I wanted to get rid of it. And maybe I should have only tackled the bad spots and left the others, but I did the whole thing. <laughs> and I guess my technique was not very good. Now I did use 2000 grit sandpaper. I don't think that was a mistake. Sure, I could have gone with 1500, but I think 2000 is, 2000 is fine. But I was using a 45 degree crosshatch kind of pattern that I seen in some professional videos. And some other people said, don't bother doing that. You know, go one direction, next pass another, go back to the other. And just when you have your finishing pass, just one direction and you'll get a better finish. And that probably would have been true. Um, in any case, I don't think doing it by hand is a good idea, at least not with black paint, because any of these scratches have to be lifted out, otherwise you will see them. <laughs> um, maybe it's the same with all paints, but black paint is especially bad for showing that. Now the last mistake that I made was thinking I could get this project done with simple machinery. And at least for me, I couldn't. So let's talk about some of the products and what worked and what didn't. So, the products that I used. First, the Meguiar's Gold Class Car Shampoo. I've been using it for years. I recommend it. Next, the Kirkland brand, or Costco brand Kirkland microfiber towels. Um, highly recommend it. If you're going to do a project like I've done, you're going to use a lot of them. So get the 36 pack. These are definitely worth it. Now, if you think you're going to be able to do a project of this magnitude with a buffer like this, you might want to think again. At least in my experience, that was not the case. This would be good for maybe the polish, definitely the waxing, but it's just not going to be good enough for a proper cut and definitely not for any kind of sanding. Now, if you do decide to wet sand your car, which you may want to really consider that, but if you do, I recommend going with a machine. In, in fact, I should have went with it right from the beginning. It saved me so many headaches, and if I would have done this right off the bat, I would have saved a lot of time, but if you are going to do something by hand, I don't recommend this 3M rubber pad right here. It's just too firm, so I don't recommend that one, but I do recommend this soft sponge foam pad right here. Again, it's by 3M, uh, so for hand sanding, this seems to do a good job. As for the DA itself, uh, I did pick up this uh, premium or platinum series from Simona's. Uh, I got it on sale. Uh, I'm sure there's, well, I know there's better products out there. There's a lot better products out there, but they're also a lot more money. For the sanding process, I was told that this is just not going to work, but it seemed to work fine for me. Um, I'm sure a rotary would have been better, uh, but I just wasn't going to spend the money on two different machines. When it comes to the wet sanding, I really recommend the 3M Trizac pads. Now this is 3000 grit. I later went to 5,000 and I was recommended to go to 8,000 grit because I have black paint. Now, this seems obvious, but the more effort or the better the finish you have in your wet sanding, the less you're going to have to compound later. Unfortunately, I got to borrow this little Meguiar's DA power system and I have to say it works pretty well. Obviously, it attaches to your drill. I have a cut pad on it right here. This is the polishing pad here. It's a little softer. This is a little firmer and it works really well. Uh, I don't think I'd want to do an entire car with it, but for smaller areas and uh, that you, you can't get a six inch pad in, this works very well. And I'm, I'm actually quite surprised at how well it works. So yeah, I, I kind of recommend that. As for the pads, obviously I have a foam cut pad for the Meguiar's machine here. I have a foam pad. Uh, bonnet and a microfiber bonnet for the Simona's dual action 8 inch machine. I have a wool pad, a foam cut pad for the 6 inch dual action. I also have a 
finishing pad that came with the kit. And then I have a foam finishing pad for the Meguiar's as well. Uh, this worked good. This didn't do a whole lot, uh, at least when I was on the, the blue dual action, the, the blue machine. This has a use. It cut a lot better than that. I did not like the wool. I found it left a lot of swirls and little tiny micro scratches, like little C's. So I wasn't too happy with that one. This foam pad right here, uh, it says it's that make. I didn't really like it. I found that when using the Meguiar's compound that this dusted a lot. And yeah, not a huge fan. So in my opinion, if you're doing a cut uh, or like a you know a proper compounding with something like the, well, the Meguiar's 105, get a microfiber pad. When I put this on top of that, I got much better results. So I recommend a microfiber for doing your compounding, for your cut compound. And then a foam finishing pad uh, it is recommended for your final polish. As for the compounds, I got these two bottles in a package deal. And as you know, I was using Meguiar's 105 cut compound. It does cut really well. It is a 12 out of 12 on the scale. Uh, to go from a wet sand finish to a shiny black finish, it does it immediately. So that works good. However, in my experience, this stuff flash dried pretty much immediately not all the time but in some cases and i don't really understand why uh, i was using a very cold conditions uh I try to stay out of the sun if it was in the sun this stuff it, it dried immediately um plus a lot of dust boy this thing kicks up a lot of dust especially when you're on a machine uh, so just be aware about that now if you have a car that has really old paint, lots of scratches, or in my case, you've gone to wet sanding and you're bringing it back to a nice shine. Do not get the 8 ounce bottle. Get the 32 ounce bottle. You will need it. Now at the beginning of the video, you saw I was going to use the Meguiar's 205 finishing polish. It's a good product. 4 out of 12 on the cut. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but I was recommended to try the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. I was told it would give a better result. Well, in my experience, it was exactly the same. I saw no visible differences. So, this one, you get 15.2 ounces. This one, you get eight. And this is cheaper by like 10 bucks or something like that. So, I ended up using the Ultimate Compound because it just seems to be a better value. So, that's the one I recommend. Well, lastly, we have Turtle Wax Hybrid Solution Ceramic Spray Coating. Everybody was saying go with a ceramic coating. And uh, I found a video from Project Farm that did a review on this. I will put a link in the description. I recommend giving it a watch. And from that video, you can see that this has good water repellent properties. I can tell you firsthand it's very, very smooth. Uh, it seems to be resistant to car washes and you know the elements of weather. So, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit expensive, but, you know, I guess in this case you get what you pay for. So I do recommend it. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. If any of this product is something that you want to try, please click the links in the description as any little bit helps. This video was extremely expensive to make. Uh, it cost me hundreds of dollars and a lot of hours. And honestly, I'm not so sure it was even worth it, but... I now have a nice shiny paint job I can enjoy and I'm going to be afraid to drive it because I don't want any scratches now. In any case, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.